Medical doctor Dr. Chris Reynolds responds to questions about the therapeutic benefits of wheatgrass. Should I take wheatgrass before or after a meal? You can take wheatgrass anytime. And a lot of people seem to think it's before meals or after meals or whatever, but uh, if you take it the way I suggest, uh, it uh, can be much, much more effective than just throwing it down your throat. And a lot of people can't take wheatgrass because if they can't tolerate the smell or the taste and they also seem to be drinking an awful lot of it, 30, 60 mils a day, which seems to me quite excessive. In actual fact, it, wheatgrass has some nutritional value, but that is minimal compared to what it has in terms of it being bioactive. In other words, affecting the, the physiology or the physiological state of the body. And there are multiple bioactives in wheatgrass that are absorbed rapidly through the mucous membrane in the mouth. And we call that the sublingual absorption. And uh, those molecules go directly into the bloodstream and circulate through the body and it can start working very, very quickly. In fact, it's instantaneous by, and we know this because it's, uh, it can reach the brain in virtually in a split second because people feel a rush often uh, after taking this. Some people feel a bit woozy in that, but th this is not common, but it does happen and I've observed this myself in, in, clinically in, uh, in a number of patients. And so we know that it gets to the brain very quickly. So there's something in there that, uh, that is bioactive, must be, to be giving people those symptoms. So when you actually swallow a glass full of wheatgrass or fresh wheatgrass juice, and throw it down your stomach, the stomach acid destroys many of those bioactives. So the thing to do is to really hold the liquid in your mouth for a couple of minutes to allow that absorption. It's a bit like uh, people use uh, glycerol trinitrate for angina. They put the tablets under their tongue, it's absorbed rapidly in the blood and it gets rid of their heart pain. It works in a similar way. So when you look at people taking large amounts of wheatgrass, or the fresh juice, uh, I sort of wonder why they're doing that because it's not really necessary. They could probably get away with a half or even a, you know, a quarter of what they're taking but just by holding it in their mouth longer, which for some people is pretty difficult to do. I can't do it and uh, the, uh, because I don't like the taste and, and the, the, the smell of the, of the fresh, freshly juiced grass. This is why we produced a, a product, I, I developed a, a product where, which is made out of a wheatgrass extract. And I use this because it's only a small dosage, it's from a concentrate of wheatgrass extract. And uh, you, it's only a five mil shot uh, that you hold in your mouth for a couple of minutes, let, it, let the bioactives absorb and, and you've done the same, pretty much the same thing. We also know that in that extract there's a 25% there's a higher level of antioxidants, which is very important if we're looking at our general health, the uh, ability to keep our bodies on, on track. We know that antioxidants or you know, oxidation can do a lot of damage to cells and things, so if you can prevent some of that, then the chances of you, I suppose, staying well longer are greater. That's the way to go about it. And uh, I think that uh, you can reduce your, as I said, reduce your intake of fresh grass, and, uh, but just hold it in your mouth for a couple of minutes, then swallow it. What is the appropriate amount of wheatgrass to take daily? I think that's a very uh, moot point. I don't think anybody knows the answer to that question. Uh, I've seen people react to the extract that we use, uh, you know, two or three drops. I've seen that, it can be very, very potent in some people. Uh, the, some people, when they take wheatgrass, they, they get diarrhea, they get stomach upsets and things like that. Sometimes they do with the extract. I don't think it's quite as common, but you know, I don't have any studies to show that, but it's just my own clinical experience. Um, so, the, the people are overdosing. And I know that people, some people take 150 mil a day, you know, they're juicing it and it, because, because they're thinking nutritionally. And that, that's not what it is. I mean, that's not how it works. 
they're talking about chlorophyll and how it carries oxygen in the blood. I mean, this is nonsense. It's just not true. The chlorophyll is a pigment and it doesn't really have any place in human physiology. <clears throat> Pretty important in terms of uh, producing oxygen, but it doesn't really help as much in terms of uh, uh, keeping well. So the best thing really is to forget about the green aspect and just take the, um, you know, put it in your mouth, hold it there for a few minutes and swallow it. And give it time and it's quite amazing what it can do. Would you recommend mixing wheatgrass with something else to dilute its taste? I don't really know the answer to that question. I don't think anybody does. The, um, I, I don't take fresh juice. I take, I take our, uh, our product, our spot called Super Shots, which uh, I've been taking for 19 years now. And I haven't been unwell in that time. Uh, neither has my family. So, but it doesn't matter if you, if you grow your own grass, you're going to do the same thing. Juice it, but hold it in your mouth. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Uh, you can do the same thing with, with barley grass, with uh, uh, rye grass. Any cereal grass is going to have a similar effect as, uh, as wheat grass.